Hello, hello, and welcome to the Lawrence Plays channel for part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update, where, once again, we're going to be having a bit of a look at how some of the infrastructure is coming together, how we're boosting production and that sort of thing, and, um, and why things aren't working quite as we always want them to sometimes. So, without any further ado, let's dig in. The first thing I want to have a look at is a system that Tristan has implemented which tells us when any spaceships are in, in, uh, in motion. So over here we've got, we've got systems up here that are already grabbing in um, signals from other planets in order to let us know what, is, what, what supplies there are available out there. So if we look at this one for example we can see that there's some sulphur, there's meteor defence ammo, batteries for trains and so on and so on. But we're a bit short of, ca of cables for the space elevator, we're a bit short of, uh, and we're very very short of rare metals, glass and vulcanite. And so the idea is that all of those things get fed in over here and that gets everything ready for the spaceship to be it up when it lands. So Tristan is piggybacking on these signals and passing a signal over to these lights here, um, which currently is this, this is this is now a bad example because the lights have gone off. Here we go. This is a good example. So um, this tells us when the when the lights are on like this, this means that the spaceship is currently on its way somewhere. It, we don't know we don't know just from this whether it's on its way to to Norbit or whether it's on its way to Agnea, but we know that it's somewhere on, on in flight. So you can, there we go. We can see the Agnea one is is currently on its way from Agnea around to Norbit. So it is currently in motion. And this is a quick way to check to see the, to see whether the ships are actually doing stuff because they should fill up and an empty reasonably quickly at both ends as long as supply is reasonably high so if you if you if you think hey we're a bit short of vulcanite in this particular case Oh, but that's okay. The lights are on. That means the ship is probably on its way over, uh, on it, maybe on its way back here, or maybe it's just left. But if we're short of stuff, then it probably hasn't just left. It gives you a little bit more information at a glance, anyway. So we, you can look along here and see that, for example, Snowdrop, the ship is not on its way, even though we are running, even though we are basically completely out of uh, of cryonite. Uh, Kothar, the same sort of problem. Um, but it, it's, yeah, it gives you it gives you a little extra bit of information, so you can you can tell what's going on, which could be potentially quite useful. Tristan also noticed that while we are launching probe rockets from space, it will go out and get us a bit more, and we'll send out a satellite, and we'll get us more satellite telemetry data. We don't actually have a system for um, making sure that that then gets shipped down to the ground. After the probe rocket launches, it'll come back and it'll, un it'll unload all all of the uh, telemetry data down here, down this belt. And it'll come along here to be put into the train over here, and we would. And it turned out the train wasn't travelling as often as it ought to because it didn't need to. The idea, the, the uh, train is mostly intended to come up here, bringing up all the supplies that are required for the uh, for the probe spaceships and also the probe rocket here, and then um, and that's. It looks like that's pretty much all that train does. So that meant there was a fairly high chance of it waiting down at the bottom and going, well, I don't, don't, don't think we need to take anything at the moment. There's, nothing, there's not enough stuff to bring up. And so we'd have all of these satellite telemetry data waiting up here, waiting for them to be taken away down to Norvis, and nothing coming to pick them up. And so we now have a uh, monitoring system over here that will watch the amount of the quantity of the satellite telemetries in the chest here, where they're being unloaded to be made into the gold science cards. It then subtracts one from it, so that when it, when the signal goes up to the other end, we'll get an alert sent up to here, triggering more rockets to launch. But also, once the probe rocket has launched a few times and this belt has filled up to the point where there's at least a hundred on this section of belt here, which shouldn't be too hard to get to, it will then also be sending this uh, arrow, this up arrow signal all the way down to, down in the in the uh, transmitter down to the ground as well. And that tells the train that there's an important thing that needs to be done, so actually we want you to come up here immediately. And that will mean the train will trundle up, even if it's not completely full. It'll pull in along here, it'll, and then it'll get loaded up with, with the, by using these inserters with all of these satellite telemetries that are, waiting, that are waiting along here, and all the ones that are backed up along the belt. That signal is the same one that triggers the uh, the inserter here to start loading the, uh, the the satellites into the probe rocket here, and, act and actually launching them. So when we run out down on the ground, we'll start loading the, uh, the, the satellites in, the satellites will launch, the telemetry data will come out, and then when the belt fills up, then that's when we tell the uh, tell the train to come up and grab them, and then, well, it's a bit of a convoluted route that they go through on the ground on the way down. So let's 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 have a quick look through that because they they yeah, they come along here, they go into the train, the train will then pick up miscellaneous junk in orbit and then bring it down to here. It'll unload absolutely everything here, so they'll flow down here into the into the trains down here, which will take them up here to the uh, core processing area where they'll be unloaded here into into the, like all the rest of the junk system unloads. They'll dump it all out into here. It'll flow through, and then it'll go onto this belt, which will bring it round and up to here which will put it into this train, and then when this train finally has more than a thousand in it, it will head off and go down 
all the way over to here, where it'll drop them off onto this belt and start the system running again. So it's it, it's a it's a bit convoluted, but it should work once we get the uh, once we get the system up and running nicely. And at the moment, we've still got 184 more here to churn through. So it's going to be a little while until we have to actually trigger it. We also discovered right at the end of the last stream that the snowdrop ship is broken. So this is this is snowdrop orbit, so the, uh, the cryonite and, and miscellaneous other stuff is being merrily brought up here, ready to be loaded onto the spaceship. However, um, due to the vagaries of Factorio, we've got, um, we've, we've essentially, we're telling the, the filter inserters along here to load up the spaceship based on whatever's in, whatever's in the storage system up here. Um, and it seems to be connected to these warehouses and to this one. And unfortunately, and I don't know whether this is bad luck or some sort of ex other weird thing, but it's picked out coal, processed fuel, stone, and sand. And these warehouses have got lots and lots of stuff in, but they don't have coal, processed fuel, sand, or stone. And so that means that these, these inserters are not running. So the, the obvious way to fix this, stop setting filters, and set it to blacklist and remove all of these things and then copy that from there all the way down here like this so that there's no filter set on here anymore and then it'll just work it'll, it'll pass all of the uh, all of the stuff over from in here and to be honest i'm not quite sure why mark originally set it, set it up like this uh, it, why it's set to watch what's coming up here and then only pass through the things that have, come, that have been passed in now i know why it was it, there was another reason why one version of this system was counting the stuff or ob observing the stuff that was coming up before and it was passing it over to this side so we could blacklist it to make sure that we never unload something that's just been put into the spaceship out of the other side but why these inserters weren't just running flat out with absolutely everything. I'm I'm honestly not sure. I, I I'm not sure what the design uh, intention was there. Hopefully Mark will let us know in the comments. But yeah, it was a bit it's a bit weird. Um, but ha however, having removed those filters, as you can see, it's now working very very nicely. We've got the stand. We we had 500 stacks of stuff in these warehouses, so we will be able to fill the spaceship up without any difficulty. It's going to take a little while because there's a lot of stuff to pass over. But we will fill the spaceship up, and then there'll be another warehouse of stuff available, and then another one down here, and the train can go. Around a few more times and and, and there's, there's there's plenty basically there's plenty of stuff to bring up at this point so I imagine that by the time the ship has gone and come back again there'll probably be another full load ready for it to pick up and go off once again 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 uh, ooh, these are quite pretty stripes down here I, I, I approve continuing with the things that Tristan has been up to well he's always been in charge of the uh, the rubbish disposal down here and I believe some petroleum gas barrels might have got into the system somewhere I'm not sure if it was here or whether he's just found them in the ch in the in the uh, warehouses of shame but he says he's put in a petroleum gas emptying facility somewhere so that's probably ah oh, here we go this one here is a machine that is take is bringing in petroleum gas barrels through the roboport network just to pull them out of the system because if we look if we look at this uh, this this one we see we can see well we've got there's another 130 there's got a hundred 131 of them to empty and then it's then passing the barrels onto here where they are currently not going anywhere oh there is a machine down here to, dis to crush them and dispose of them and put the uh, steel into a chest here to be got rid of uh, but it's a bit slow because crushing machines always are that said this is only supposed to be for a system that just pulls whatever is in the in the uh, in, in the roadport network out and deals with it and so it's done that and now there shouldn't be an enormous amount number more coming through so I think this is this is going to catch up and be absolutely okay it just takes a little while to clear through it all. And I've just noticed everything around here seems to be uh, tier 2 modules and um, and speed, one speed and two productivity, productivity as well, which is not how we build things around here. I don't, I don't know why this is still using such old tech. Um, <laughs> but I guess we can't upgrade the refineries any further, although we could use better beacons and we could certainly use better modules. But I guess it's an, it, it hasn't been broke, so we haven't gone in to fix it. He's also followed my suggestions from in the in the previous video and got rid of some of the um, underground purple belts. It's a, purple belts can go an incredibly long distance underground, as you can see here, and that's part of the reason why they're so expensive. And so he's gone through and cleared out a few of these gaps because there was another the underground belt was popping up again here with some purple belt going across and then going underground again. So all of that stuff in between these signals was wasted. So he's replaced that with a single underground belt instead of having two of them and then a load of normal belts. He's done the same here as well uh, and and here and generally yeah there's been a bit a bit of tidying up going on around here uh, now it's not been done 100% because they could do the same thing here with these ones those could be extended a long way this could be extended yeah this could be extended you could get, we could get rid of just all of that the bots come in and grab that away and now that yeah that's linked now to the other side of there so that's another another quick and easy saving a lot of these bits 
I mean, they could be extended, but I don't know if there's any point because it, it makes the area harder to read. You can, at one extreme, you can go to this sort of thing where you have, you just have the entire belt system being underground. So you have a tiny little corner bit like that, and it's underground all the way to the warehouse, and it's underground all the way to here. It pops up briefly because that's that's the maximum length. And again, so you, these sort of things tend to be a bit hard to read because you, it makes it much harder to follow the follow the belts with your eyes. But over here, since these are all just long, straight, vertical belts, it's it's not so much of an issue with these ones. Uh, there's, there's, so there's probably a little bit more of saving that could be, a little bit, few more savings that could be done. Like there's another area here that could be removed, and and here, let's get rid of that one, um, and so on. They're just you, 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 the, these sort of savings are really, really obvious and, and definitely worth going for. Um, whether it's actually worth sort of extending things out to the absolute maximum, like pulling these one, the, these underground all the way up here, because just because they can be, or whether you're better off just leaving uh, leaving them as they are, because it's, it's wasting belts, yes, but it's not wasting the undergrounds, and the undergrounds are much much more expensive. I don't know. I could I could see I could see it going either way, and e either having it having its advantages. But he's done yes, done a little bit a bit of tidying there, and that's made things a lot cheaper on and, and got and given us a lot more purple underground belts, or at least removed a lot of the pressure on the uh, on the system that was um, trying to where we were trying to make. Them as much as possible and really really struggling due to lack, lack of um, iridium. So yes he did say he's been emptying the warehouses of shame a bit. Uh, over here we've got uh, we've got nothing programmed in at the moment but we could in theory put in anything we anything we notice in here that we want to get get out out back into the into the system over here we, we can do that by programming it into this combinator at the top and then that'll pass out to all of these uh, all of these filter inserters and we'll get those back out onto here and then they're going into a into a gray warehouse and then I'm not quite maybe he's done a bit of manual tidying here but getting rid of all of these uh, tier one um, productivity module seems like a good idea. We can pass them back over to be recirculated. But I think there were some issues with that because they're being passed, sent up to the station, up to orbit as well. I'm not sure. This is, but this is the the idea of all of this is to start trying to remove some of the some of the nonsense that we've ended up with in the chest of shame. Like we've got 15,000 delivery cannon capsules because we're basically not using delivery cannons anymore. And some people have done 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 big tidies where they've pulled all of that stuff back out of the um out off their off their remote planets and just sent it over to Norvis saying, here you go, Tristan, you deal with all of this. We, I don't want any of this. Over here, we've got some of the splitters and the underground belts, and and lots and lots of these um, of these product tier one productivity modules. So those can be sort of, I guess, these could in theory be tidied away. And these these splitters and and uh, can, can all be reused. And they're in a, except that they're in a grey warehouse, so they're not going to get reused. Maybe that's what this one is for. But I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure what he's doing here. And there's a couple of machines over here which are making um, advanced ele additional electric engines. So that's oh these are, these are make, just make for making things that we need very very small numbers of because these have been were chucked in the trains many many years ago. Um, and also the uh, this, is, this is the text plates, isn't it? Yes, it is. So these yeah, these are apparently I think this is completely separate. Um, yeah, yeah, Mark made these, not Tristan. So, so these are something completely separate. They're just knocking together a few things that we needed in in, in very very small numbers. We seem to also have a large number of buffer chests over here with um, with various belt types in them, um, and a few other miscellaneous bits and pieces as well. Uh, so these are requesting all of the all, actually these are requesting all of these things to be brought over here from construction, and then I guess they're then making them available to be used for whatever. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. These might have, I have a feeling these might have been here for a very very long time and were used for sort of equipping these our building trains over here that could then be sent off to do goodness knows what where, wherever they were needed but now we've moved on from all this stuff so all I think a lot of the stuff in these warehouses over here is also pro also probably counts as shame and could be got rid of <laughs> Tristan does also say that he switched over the filters on some of the uh, the belt chests over here to, um, to to now sort of request those those things be brought back in again although these all seem to be green chests. He did say he, he I thought he said yellow chests. Um, oh, maybe he means these ones. So with these underground belts, yes, we're now we've now got a logistics filter on there. So in theory, if we pull up any red underground belts, they'll be brought to here. If we bring, pull up any red splitters, they'll be brought to here. And the same with blue and green and green and so on and, and purple. So all of the all of the, those underground belts that I pulled up uh, earlier should have been brought over to here and dropped into these these uh, chests to, to get them out of the system and get them in, in somewhere where somewhere sensible. And given that this has a limit of this is a limit of a thousand. Okay, this is no. This is this one's just straight up limited by by supply. We don't have enough purple belts coming in. I was going to say that perhaps these these fourteen over here are from that sort of thing being having been done, but no, no. It's just because we don't have enough um, iridium bearings to make to make all of the purple belts to make all of the underground belts that we want. Oh well, we've got we've got two and we've got one hundred and fourteen of them, and that's a lot better than things have been recently. So we're getting there. Sort of a very very small number of iridium bearings at a time. 
Out on Kothar, Mike and Mark have been fighting over how the system works. <laughs> now that's a bit unfair. They've been there uh, when Mike was was away last week. Uh, Mark did a load of improvements over here, or at least what he thought were improvements, and were fixing problems he was finding. Uh, and Mike came back and didn't like some of them. Um, but the, uh, the the pro the system is sort of is is coming together nonetheless. So we've got we've got a system over here now where um we're, we're prioritisation. So we're watching how much. Uh, how much crushed iridium is in the warehouse here and in the warehouse over, warehouse over here. And when there's a relatively small amount of it, it gets passed up to the first bank of machines over here. So that's basically all that's all the time. Then when there's at least when we get over 5000 of it, then the the overflow will then get passed into this system here and probably the same over on this side as well. Yes. So we then use this this one will run and then if we and then if we have absolutely loads of it, so if it gets to 10 and then even 15000, then we'll start unloading into these two banks down here. And the reason we're prioritizing like that is because these ones have the tier 6 productivity modules in them and these ones don't. And that means it's better to produce with these ones if we have a shortage of iridium because that will get us more out output for the same amount of input. However, if we have loads and loads of input, then because we could do with a large, a very, very large quantity of iridium, then any overflow would be nice to pass out to down here. I'm not sure why these two are tr these these two are treated separately and these two are treated separately. Well, I don't know why it's not just pour out on both of these belts all of the time and then these two if there's more than 20,000 or something like that. We'd have to ask Mark about that. I don't know what the logic behind that was, but in theory that should allow this, this system to, uh, to, to run a bit faster. And then we've got the tier 6 modules in here as well. And then all of the, that blast cake gets passed over here along the top belt, that one has a pri output priority, which means it'll come along here and find its way into this, this, this system up here, which again is, fu is full of tier 6 productivity modules, so we'll get more out of those if we can. These ones down here, actually these ones down here are also full of tier 6 modules, so it doesn't matter which of the, uh, which of the sets of machines it, they, they get passed, to, passed through to over here, they're all upgraded to the, to the, uh, to the top level. Mike's big push with this though wasn't in this processing area. That's just that that was already that was already there from the week before. He's been expanding and improving the the iridium mining. So over here, for example, I think we I think these ones already existed. So let's see if we can find another one, what, a, a new one that's been upgraded. Right, okay. There, he's left he's left a little note for me. Up here is all new and improved. Great. So what he's done up here is he's put in some additional mines uh, for pulling up the iridium. And as you can see, despite the sheer number of mining drills he has here, oh, because he's gone in and put, gone and put um, tier three productivity modules in them. Um, yeah, okay, that means the patches will last a lot longer, but he's got, but this is, there's 15, 20, uh, 35, there's almost 40 million iridite here, so personally, I wouldn't have put all of these um, productivity modules in. However, it's not necessarily wrong. It means it means these mines will last a lot longer, but it does mean that we're getting this very, very slow trickle out of them because they're running at uh, 0.2 times their normal speed. And because these are relatively high tier drills, they probably run at faster than a speed of one. Um, oh no, that says minus 80% is the limit. Okay, so it, it is running, it's running at 0.2, which is 20% uh, uh, yeah, uh, of, its, of its normal speed. He could also make this faster by using smaller drills rather than the big ones. Um, the big ones have the advantage that they cover a bigger area, so you don't need as many of them to cover a, cover a patch. But if you want to pull it out as, as quickly as possible, then smaller drills are probably better. However, maybe the smaller drills don't take five productivity modules. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, he's gone. He's gone in here, and he's he's, he's getting the this, the, um, the the iridite is being dug up very very slowly because um, because of all the productivity modules. But it does mean that these patches will last approximately forever. The mining process is a little bit more difficult because you do have to bring in sulfuric acid for it so he's got he's got a station he's got stations down here one of which is doing a sulfuric acid drop off here and then that's being piped out to all the mines and then the and, the, and then the other one is then we've got an iridite pickup station here and a sand pickup station here this one is misnamed oh it's called iridite pickup rather than crushed iridite pickup i i think that's still probably going to cause problems i hope that's going to cause problems i guess we'll find out so that means so then all of the all the iridite from all of those um, all of those mining drills is then brought in and it's being pulverized on site because one of the big problems that mike was having with here is that if you try and put if you try and put the iridite into into a train you only get about 10 pieces of it in or something like that it's, it's ridiculously voluminous anyway you you can hardly fit any in a train before it fills up and so he started now pulverizing it down to get to get um significantly more through partly because if you look at the numbers here you see that each time each piece of iridite that gets used up turns into half of crushed iridite so each time this runs it'll use up 60 percent of an iridite and produce 30 percent of a crushed iridite so that means that every two so it turns two iridite into one crushed iridite and some sand as well um and and but they've been with some extra looping around going on as well which is a uh, an extra headache, but you know, but it is it's sort of irrelevant to that to the numbers there. And then over here, the crushed iridite stacks all the way up to 40, which is glorious. 
because I was going to show you how, how badly it stacks over here, but I actually there's so it stacks so badly that I actually can't show you how badly it stacks um, because we 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 flows through. Oh, here we go. Here's a train. That's convenient. Yeah, it stacks up to ten. So we are fitting literally eight times. See how quickly that unloads, and then it just pours out and it's gone immediately. Whereas this a train coming into this station over here that's bringing in the the uh, iridite that's been crushed on site brings in literally eight times as much. And so we'll keep the system over here running. We'll produce eight times as much iridium afterwards. And so that's why Micah started pulverizing uh, remotely. So we've got a pulverizing station out there, a pulverizing system out here as well, and and here as well. This one looks like this one. This one's been upgraded as well. So it's got quite a few mines now. The only one I can see that hasn't been upgraded yet is down here, and that is fixing the logistic problem quite quite well. In that we're now able to bring through far far more for each train load. And so that means you don't spend all of your time just waiting for waiting for a train to come in. It, it empties in, almost instantly and then disappears again uh, uh, whereas this way at least you start to get a bit more coming through one thing Mike hasn't really taken advantage of on this planet and we're having a little bit of a discussion about this uh, previously was he's not really gone in for the core mining I think he's got two two core mining drills one down here and one up here whereas the rest of us when we've gone on our, off on our planets have, have put in a bit more uh, have tried to go out and grab as many of the drills as many of the core seams as possible and there's like three four five up in this sort of area. Now, Mike did say that part of the reason he's not done it is because he he started colonising the planet from a corner. If you can have a corner of a circle or a planet, it's, it's pretty ridiculous either way. But he start he started colonising down on the edge over here, and over on the edge, the core seams are a bit rarer. And this has been and, and until he dropped a the uh, plague rocket on this planet before, it was very very bitery. So going out and trying to do anything on this planet was was difficult. However, now it has got to the point where all the biters are gone, it would be relatively straightforward to come in and grab all of these uh, mining all, all these drills in this sort of area. There's eight in that area, and I think and that would mean that it, he'd be able to get quite a lot more core fragments through to bring them down here to be pulverized, and without really getting to the point where it's too diminishing returny. Um, so I think I think coming over here and yeah grabbing grabbing the sort of the eight or nine around in the, in this sort of area right in the middle of the planet and then training those down over here or maybe even just running a really long mark belt down here to bring them all down to run through the pulverizers over here or down down here rather it wouldn't solve all of his problems it wouldn't be a miracle cure but it would help a bit and it would take some of the strain off the, off the mines around here which are as you can see are fairly a fairly slow process. We'll see. We'll wait and see whether he, he does do that. In the meantime, looking back in time, well, I mean, he's been producing about 260, uh, 270 iridium ingots per minute for quite a long time. Then he got cut off here. I'm not sure what was going on here. Something was obviously, presumably something was being upgraded. And so that turned it off for half an hour. Then it spiked up all the way up to here, which is probably running through the backlog from this. And now we're back to being limited, I assume, by the mining again. So... Some improvements have been made, but it's still at the point where it's not being made fast enough to fill up to satisfy the rest of the factory. So I'm afraid, Mike, you're going to have to spend a lot more time out on this planet building this up because uh, it. I know iridium. Iridium is difficult. It's, it's a difficult metal to work with, and it's, it requires enormous amounts of effort to produce even relatively small amounts of it. But we are absolutely ripping through it. Uh, so I'm afraid. We just we just need more. That's that's all all I can really say. And I'm not sure what we can do to improve product production. I and mean, we yes we can we can have more being brought in so that the rest of more of the machines kick in over here. Oh, we've got right now we've got a little bit coming through on the on the on the slow belt over here. That's um, that's a bit surprising. Um, so yeah, we we can we can have we can have more being brought in. We can upgrade all of this to tier six modules, so we've got nice nice high productive productivity there. We could even consider bringing over some tier seven or tier eight productivity modules. Although I'm a bit loath to do that because those modules are incredibly expensive. But I mean, we we could. But beyond that, I don't think there's really any other significant upgrades we can do apart from just make it bigger. We've got full tier. We have got tier six product speed modules in here. So these all of these. So centrifuges are running as fast as is realistically possible. Same down here, all tier six uh, speed modules. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything we can do apart from just say we need more mines and we need to upgrade these machines to be tier six modules as well. Having been saying that, we have run out, we have now run out of uh, one of the acids to, for, for for this. We've run out, we've run out of nitric acids to, to do for this for this processing. So that is something that could be fixed. I think that is a, I think that's a rare metal related issue. So when the spaceship comes back out again, dumps out, uh, dumps out a load of rare metals. We're going to be able to then bring them down and start turning them into nitric acid, and that will that will fix the problem at least for the time being. Maybe that means we need to bump up the amount of rare metal we're requesting. That might be a good idea because yeah. 
know, we, 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 we're we we're struggling right now. Um, it doesn't doesn't seem to be enough of it. Oh, I also noticed that the, uh, I just saw a couple of um, delivery cannon capsules fall out of the sky here with the enriched vulcanite. So another, another thing that need, yet as yet needs to be done, uh, which is interesting given that um, Mike did claim to have done it. <laughs> we also need to set up the, uh, the spaceship that comes out over to here to bring out the enriched vulcanite as well. Maybe he has done it and it just hasn't brought any over yet because it's in 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 the in in the process of doing it. I will we'll find out in a, in a future uh, stream. I think while this area was being sorted out, Mark did also take out those barrels I noticed last time that had been passed through here, gone into here, been passed out on the other side of the spaceship, and then looped all the way around and come back to down down to. I think they came, actually made it all the way down to over here. Uh, so he's he's tidied that up as well. So that won't be a problem. <laughs> We had an alert pop up during the uh, during the last stream saying that uh, there was a train that had run out of fuel, and it was this this one here, or, or this one or its friend, because there's two of them running doing the loop o over here on on, uh, on Taras or from Taras. And it turned out the reason this didn't work was because the um, the the battery charger down here had been set to unload. It had been set to, with, with without a disposal system, so it, or without a proper disposal system. So it was just taking the it was taking the dead batteries out of the train, charging them up, and putting them back in again, which. Sounds like a good idea, I and mean, that's a good way to to, uh, to keep to keep your batteries being charged. Um, but there was also another inserter on the other side over here that was putting more in, and so that meant that this this quickly got to the point where there wasn't room to put any extra batteries in from here into the train, and therefore it wasn't taking any out. And so the train got into the weird position of being of, of uh, having full plenty of full batteries on this side, but also completely full on the other side with the dis discharge power packs. And so I came I, I came over here as you can tell by the fact that my, the spaceship with my name on it is parked. Here and um, and start and and, and and fix this basically by putting in this belt along the bottom here to get rid of the, uh, the the charged batteries out of here rather than trying to put them back into the train they're now being brought around here fed into the in up here and put into the and uh, and then put into the train from this side so there's only one inserter loading in but we've got the priority here making sure that these batteries will go in this way by by preference and I have noticed that this this one is still struggling a bit over here there's there's we're not unloading this quite as much as I would like because there's so many batteries coming in from the uh, from the other charger. Um, I might have to do something about that, like uh, this, and that will allow this one this one to empty. And then next time the train comes back over here, it will be able to unload the batteries, and we, we, that 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 should sort it. I think um, it's a it's a bit of a silly problem, but it will uh, it will that will hopefully get us around it. Taras also had some issues with the rare me the way the rare metal was being handled when it get got brought down in the elevator uh, by, by the train and unlo unloaded into here. Um so we previously there was a single uh, loader passing the uh, passing the rare metals through from this warehouse into the into this warehouse and you know we've 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 talked we've talked about this before having having loaders running like that isn't great for UPS so I've replaced them with all of these um, inserters instead so there's far more inserters uh, but that'll mean we can pass them through much more quickly because I also noticed that when at least when the system was running running flat out and producing lots and lots of the uh, plate these belts were not able to keep up um, or rather the passing through from this warehouse to this warehouse was not able to keep up with the two belts being pulled out on the other side now that we've got lots and lots of plate and we're not actually making plate it's absolutely fine because we no longer need the rare metals at least not in any significant quantities uh, so yeah now now it's absolutely fine but previously it was it was struggling so I, I did a bit a little bit of tidying up there and having been triggered to start looking at the alerts down here by uh, by a fuel alert, I thought I'd then have a bit of a bit of a look through the list and see if there's anything that I could deal with. And so I came over here. There was one that said uh, scrap well, scrap was backing up. So I came over here, had a look at these. There was quite a bit in one of these chests. So I I briefly uh, tweaked a priority up here uh, in order to pass it over into the other chest, and then tweaked it back again once it once it had cleared out. That didn't fix the alert. It turned out that Tristan had just copied and pasted them all the way through and hadn't renamed all of the alerts. And the one that was actually sad was the one down here which monitors how many dead batteries there are in this chest uh, and as you can see there's rather a lot at the moment and this is a number that will wax and wane over time so when every so often you, you may potentially get a bit of a flood of, of a demand on the on the batteries and then a few more will be pulled out more and then more will, or more will come back around I don't know it seems a little bit sus but anyway the, the, we have far more in here than we than we than we intend to have and so that set the alert off i came over i had a look at it i increased the i increased the uh, the number that it was going to alert at for to from i think it was 800 to 1600 because that seemed to be okay at the time since then a load more have come through We've got this one here set to only run when there's no batteries in this, uh, discharge batteries in here. So it'll only run when there's none in here, none on here being re recycled through from the OK, and when there's and when there's uh, no charge batteries down here. So if we completely run, if we completely use up all of the buffers through here, then we'll allow more brand new discharge batteries to come through and be charged up. Uh, that 
shouldn't happen too often, in theory. Um, but for some reason, we've managed to build up 2,600 of them in here uh, that need to be recharged or recycled or whatever. I don't know why we've got quite so many of them in here and why this number seems to be going up. Um, I think some sort of monitoring is going to be in order here. I, I'm, I'm hoping we haven't got some productivity modules in there somewhere that's just creating more of them. We can't have because that isn't a thing. But for some reason we seem to have an awful lot of these discharge batteries. He's gone up to 2,700 now. And this chest is now basic, is very, very nearly full. Y you can see why I'm worrying a bit about this. And this looking at the alerts down here was also what got me thinking about the, uh, the core mining. Because you see we've got many, many cores available apparently on Norvis. So if we look down here, that triggers when the most distant mines, I think they're either up here or down here, but when the most distant mines are waiting are waiting for pickup and haven't, and haven't had one and they're getting a bit full. So this one is currently getting a pickup. Oh, but the desti destination full. That's that's a weird one. Uh, yeah, so the... the, the um, so basically this boils down to us having a, uh, a few too many uh, core fragments coming through here, more than the system is capable of dealing with. Um, maybe we need to upgrade these speed modules, who knows. But a lot of the problem with related to that is that we then have too much stuff coming out on the other side. And that was why I started looking at the uranium, as I, I talked about in the last video. I won't, I won't go over that again. And so finally we want to take a look at the research. In the last stream we completed a whole one research project and that was uh, Robot Speed 12, this one. Um, and as you can see it, it takes 15,000 science packs to do it and that's, so that's probably a large part of why it took so long. And as you can see that's ripping through the turquoise ones, the advanced ones and the matter science ones. Which goes some way to explaining why there was such a shortage of all of those on the, on the bus. We're now working on Mining Productivity 9 uh, which again is a similarly long research. This is going to take basically most of next stream or at least mining productivity 10 is going to take more than next stream i think and again this one is using the advanced tech card so we are again you can see why we're getting through quite so many of those and why i'm having so much trouble building enough building them fast enough to keep everything happy <laughs> but you know it's going to be a very very useful research to get this will mean more chunks coming out of the core mines it'll mean more more ores coming out of all of our mines everywhere so this will add a, a not insignificant amount it'll add an extra 10 percent onto the amount of uh, all of the resources that we get out of the ground so you know it's pretty worth having. And so that brings us to the end of the video. As ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been interesting and insightful. We'll be back on Thursday to carry on with all of the problems I've been talking about today and in the last video as well. There's, there's plenty of stuff that still needs to be fixed because there always is. Uh, but we're going to be calling that a new series because we've got to a good, I feel like we've got to a good lot point to draw a line now. We've finished off all of the, all of the basic space sciences, including the, sort of the, the four tiers of the, um, of the four colours and the advanced tech cards that came after that. So now I think it might be time to brave the, the, uh, um, the terrors of deep space and naquium and deep space science. So join us on Thursday for our um, our first foray into that sort of those sort of areas, and join me on Tuesday when I should be playing some more satisfactory and taking a look, taking a bit more of a look at that game. Um, I, I managed to build a space elevator in that one as well, so uh, we'll see if I can start using that in the, on Tuesday, and I'll try and get a video out on Wednesday for everyone as well. And you know. There's always stuff going on on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on anything. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.